NASA astronaut Terry Verts getting ready to make his second flight into space, a former shuttle uh, pilot. Uh, just earlier this month before he uh, left the Guggeron um, Cosmonaut Training Center uh, for Baikonur, uh, my colleague, uh, NASA Public Affairs Officer Brandy Dean, got to spend a few minutes with him. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and take a look at that and catch up uh, with Terry just a, a little while ago as he was getting ready to head down and get ready to head up towards the International Space Station. Okay, Terry, so you have been getting ready for this day for, I guess, at least two years, depending on how you count it. What has it been like traveling around the world training for this? This training flow has been great. It's been really a culmination of my career. Getting to go to the international partners, Europe, Japan, Canada, and of course, primarily Russia, um, all while being based out of JSC has been a busy time. It's been lots of travel, but um, it's been fun. It's been... Um, probably the most fun part of my career that I've ever had. But maybe it'll be top soon. What's left to do between now and launch day? Well, let's see, the launch plans right now are gonna be the 24th of November in Kazakhstan, 23rd in Houston. And between now and then, we have a big ceremonial day tomorrow with a press conference and a state commission and a ceremony at Red Square. Once you get to Baikonur, there's really two main events there, the Premierkos or the fit checks, roughly equivalent to the TCDT that we did on the shuttle. And we'll be going inside the vehicle in our spacesuits, just making sure everything fits, making sure we know where all the specific locations of equipment are. So we have these two fit checks inside the Soyuz, and then our day-to-day -day life there will be going over the checklist that we have, the plans that we have, the first few days schedule, um, doing just last minute preparations for launch. Well, and then can you walk us through launch day? What is that like for you? Launch day is a long day. It's really launch two days. Uh, it starts, it'll start for us on um, Sunday as a, as a normal day. And then they'll give us the afternoon off to have uh, some rest because the following night we'll be up all night and then up all day the following day doing the docking. Um, so the actual wake up will be probably eight to nine hours before launch. Uh, we'll do some medical testing. They'll do some, uh, just the last minute preparations there, eat some meals, um, walk, drive out to the launch pad, which is about a 30 or 45 minute drive away, get suited up in the suit, go out to the spaceship about three hours before launch. And then we'll get strapped in, do all of our comm checks and start getting the, the spaceship ready for launch. And then after launch, it's a six-hour trip. It's four-orbit rendezvous is the plan to the space station. Um, and then once we dock, it'll be another hour, a couple hours before we get the hatches open and we get in the space station. And so it's just a long, long, long day. Um, but I think the adrenaline will be going and uh, everybody, no, I've never heard anybody complain about that day. It's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, once you get on orbit, I know you've got a, a lot of work planning, and, and one of the big things, of course, is, is science experiments. So are there any science experiments that you're really looking forward to? You know, there's so many different science experiments. Between NASA and international partners, there's over 150 different experiments we're going to be doing. Um, the one in particular that we won't have much to do with, but I think is just fascinating, is on the outside of the space station. The Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer is looking for intergalactic particles and antimatter and it, it's trying to figure out what the universe is made out of and um, it's a, it's just amazing fascinating stuff that the space station is a perfect platform for this experiment so hopefully in a few years once it gathers all the data that it needs we'll have a much clearer picture of the universe i have a feeling we're just going to have more questions at the end of the uh, at the end of this experiment than we did before it but that's the the beauty of science is that the more you learn the more um, the more you know that you didn't know and the more that you know that you need to learn in the future. What are some of the other highlights you're looking forward to? Well, other experiments that we'll be doing, um, one in particular, Samantha and I will be going in the airlock and they're going to partially depressurize it and uh, they're going to look at our uh, respiratory system and how our lungs are working and hopefully that'll help people on earth that have breathing problems and also help the equipment manufacturers to build these uh, detectors to to see how people are doing with asthma and other respiratory problems um, and there's just a myriad of earth or of sorry of human physiology experiments that we're doing 
um, as far as Earth observations goes, that's something that we all look forward to. That's kind of every astronaut's favorite part is looking back at, at Earth. And my astronaut, Mike Fink, a good friend of mine, one time I was with him and some kids were asking him, uh, what's your favorite planet? And, and he said, well, some people say Mars, some people say Jupiter, Saturn, some people like the moon. Um, but my favorite planet is Earth. And I think that's a good astronaut perspective that we get to see the space and the heavens and the stars and planets, um, which is a pretty unique perspective to be able to see those from space. But looking back to Earth, you're always drawn back to Earth. It's like this gigantic magnet in the universe that people are drawn to. It's our planet, it's our home. And so um, I'm really looking forward to looking at Earth from space. I bet. Um, your, your predecessors have kind of gotten a reputation for sharing some of the photos of Earth that they've taken. Are you gonna be doing that as well? I will. Um, Reed Weissman's a good friend of mine, actually another fellow Baltimore native from Maryland. So we have back-to-back -back Maryland, Baltimore astronauts. And uh, a lot of guys in the past have been just amazing with Twitter. And uh, so I have some pretty big shoes to fill, but I definitely want to share. It's an adventure. It's something so unique that so few people get to do, live off of Earth and then come back. And so uh, it's something I really want to share via Twitter and Instagram and NASA interviews like this. Uh, other TV and radio, you know, whenever I have a chance to share just a, as much of the adventure as I can, I'm going to do that. At what point can you say um, that you would consider this mission successful or you will feel you've accomplished it? Well, I'll be the commander on Expedition 43. And so the, the things that will make me uh, satisfied that we've had a successful mission are first and foremost, to have a safe mission um, to get all my crew members back to Earth safely, that's the top goal. Uh, secondly, I wanna keep the space station in good working order and I wanna leave it a better place than when we got there. And then thirdly, the reason we have the space station is to do science. And so if we can accomplish and fulfill the science program that we have uh, from NASA as well as our international partners, um, that's really the mission and the whole purpose of the space station to begin with. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it, and I hope you have a great launch. We look forward to seeing a lot of your mission while you're on board the space station. Thanks. We're looking forward to it.